Good morning. Here in the studio today, it's almost nine o'clock. I think I'll start by sharing a quote with you guys. It's from Terry Gilliment. Gilliment, I don't know how to say that, but the quote just simply reads: "Art is when you when you hear a knocking from your soul." and you answer and I found that to be very true so I posted a question when I added the live event will she paint flowers again so the answer is yes and no <laughs> for today I am going to incorporate a gift I received yes it's a antler and I thought to add a flower and then draw the tails. Let's see if I like that composition. That looks good. The paper I'm going to use is from my new block from Etcher Lab and I've done some on the smaller block as you can see it doesn't buckle very much and that is because it's gummed on two sides so it's gummed on that side and on this side okay So as you know by now, my name is Tanya and I'm a art tutor, educator, online class giver, <laughs> too many titles. Bottom line is I love painting, especially with watercolor and acrylic. I like drawing and I'm doing the live events on a Wednesday morning meet me in the studio just so that you have some way to go to find out a little bit more about the type of teaching I do and see if you might be interested I'm not going for any type of realism here. For the Facebook lives, I try not to have a real plan and let the plan unfold as we're going. The Etcher Lab paper is well 300 GSM but 50% cotton paper, vegan friendly and when you're doing pattern designs a square comes in very handy. And as always, I'm working with a limited palette. And here I have cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and Prussian blue. And with that, you can mix a whole array of colors. Even, even these were all mixed from just that palette. I often work on a glass plate, a white glass plate, simply because you can see the colors mixed, you can judge the value, is it a dark shade or, you know, is it light, is it transparent, does it need more warmth? So 
So let's get to those first layers. I'm not going to constantly show you the plate, but I am going to work back and forth. I think I'm going to start in the shadows. Just lay in a little bit of a shadow underneath that and blend it out. Because shadows don't always have sharp edges. But I'm using the shadow here to frame the white flower. Some of the puddles are already mixed in here and I happen to like those shades so I'll dip my brush back in there and use that. So our shadows are always darker in those little crevices and that's just what I'm doing here, adding a little bit of depth while everything is still wet. And the shadow runs along there so we can, and it doesn't touch unless it's touching the surface it's laying on but I'm going to just add in a little bit of shadow there and in the back there okay and thin down that same color and just go behind so we don't have that background totally blank going over that because remember I wanted it to blend out okay let's mix up some I know these are greenish but I want them slightly pinkish that means a nice thinned down version of that cadmium red and we can start with one single application and just working it out and I'll dip in some darker colors into the center and wait for them to dry I like leaving a little bit of a white edge it just helps to show that there's a halo around the petals bit of a green with the yellow and the blue and you can really mute that green tones down by adding some of the violet that you get from the red and the blue because the violet will mute that bright lemon yellow color I'm not being too careful here either. Some of the colors can touch and they can bleed into each other. It just creates a nice softer edge. I want to create a beigey creamy color which means I'll have to go more neutral. So for me to test that out, I just want to get a few of the swatches on you so that you can see the colors I'm working with. Because I always get a lot of questions about the colors. How did you get it? How did you mix that? And honestly, it's trial and error. It's sitting down, working out what you like and figuring out how to get there. 
if something isn't green enough like that it's not green enough try adding one of the two colors to green it up a little I'm adding some more yellow to that blue mix and see it's greener but in the same sense you discovered that color like a turquoisey color and we're heading to a beigey color so in general I just throw all three of those colors together and see where I can move it to if I add a little bit more of the red where can it go if I add a little bit more of the blue it goes grayer what if I add a drop of the yellow well it goes to a warmer cream color I try and add some more neutral effects um, everything is doable with a limited palette if it looks too red add something else if it looks too blue add the opposite try and see where you can go it's about equal parts of all three will give you a neutral and by thinning it down you can go lighter and lighter so just there is already nine colors from just those three and I can promise you the mixability of a limited palette is endless I'll use a slightly warmer version up here and watercolor always dries lighter cooler as we go down we have to keep on adjusting the palette until we get to where we want to be You see how the greens bled into the background giving it that softer edge while we have harder edges over here and that's exactly what makes something interesting is the variation of those um, hard edges the dark against the light the contrast in the colors and you really have to just sit down and play with your paints in order to get there. I'm mixing up a cooler pink but with my water brush because I still want it to bleed out a little and I don't constantly want to dip my paint brush in the water so I'll be using this instead. And I'm picking out some of those petals. I'm not painting every single one of them. And again I'll let the layers dry in between. Even just adding a shadow side to a leaf or a petal will elevate the way you perceive it and again it's a warmer red on top and a cooler red at the bottom as that shadows are cast in there I'm gonna go back to the leafy color and adding a layer just to define the leaf a little more And bringing some texture into that antler in the background. With watercolor paper, the paper gives you a lot of that texture. It adds to your painting. I really enjoy working with watercolor in that way. Need a little more green over there. down a little. 
opposite of green is red so if your green is shouting at you just adding a little bit of red helps the green to calm down without losing its undertones you know when you go onto my facebook timelines you'll see that i've left plenty of links to go to the products that i'm making to the designs i'm creating and from all of those links you can find more links going to different areas you guys expect me to paint flowers again i think i've gotten quite a reputation for painting flowers these days <coughs> And it's funny when an artist starts moving into one direction people tend to want them to do that one thing over and over and it's not always possible because we've got a million ideas running through our heads wanting to come out I'm adding some of that darker grey into the center area just for interest and using same or similar colors throughout your picture um, sort of draws it to form a unity instead of everything looking separate from each other See how lovely that's bleeding. You can add some interesting textures with your weight and weight techniques. If you have a wet surface and you add in an additional color, the color will spread into the wet areas but stay solid in the areas that there's no water it can move into. Always gives me that playful feeling of watercolor moving into other areas. And during the time that that is wet it will continue to move I've often seen students fiddling and playing and trying to fix or adjust something instead of just leaving it alone and letting the paint do what it wants to do and move into areas I know this looks like a bruise with the purple on the lime green but it's still interesting to look at and you can do that same little experiment with any of the other colors. I'll let this dry and also sign off. If you want to learn things for free, you can check out my YouTube channel at ansodesigns.com. You can also go to my website, again, ansodesigns.com. And I have products on print-on-demand sites that you can enjoy and buy for yourself. And I also have Skillshare classes. And currently having a free premium membership is um, 
linked in a lot of my timeline images and you can literally just follow along on there and get yourself into a class and the best is you don't even have to study anything or learn anything from me there's hundreds of other teachers that you can use you can clearly see the puddles and it gives an interesting effect one area I'd like to address is over here I'm going to add in some of the white just because I need to add more lightness over there and get rid of some of that bleeding into the background but overall I'm pretty satisfied with our first two layers and from here I'll be adding in some finer details and you can just follow along Oh, let me show you this as well. Don't you just love how soft and flowy watercolor can be? I'm looking at our neutral swatches. And that. I'm definitely going to mix that up again. Use it in the next project. Now when you use limited color, color palettes like this, you end up with a selection of colors that work well together. Because if they can be mixed in a way that can complement and enhance and give you results that are pleasing, you are definitely on to winning recipes. The secret here is to actually sit down and play with your paint. I can even give you all my recipes, but they won't mean much to you if you haven't tried them out yourself. I'm mixing up a slightly darker green, um, fairly thin down, just because I don't want, I'd rather add extra layers like I mentioned before, than have the final result in one layer. And I'm not adding all the details. I'm simply adding a few lines here and there. The rest your eyes will fill in when you look at the image. And that will dry lighter of course. It's almost a matter of looking at something and thinking, but is the detail there or isn't it? Just going to add some of the white over there. I have it in a separate tube, so I'm not going to spoil your view by showing you a tube of white. I'm sure you've seen one. going to do that. Let's just stick to some white over here. Maybe give us a little bit of detail over this side. I know it's the shadow side but we'll still discover some details there. Let that dry and see where it goes.
My main focus for this last part is adding the final details to that flower because that is the main subject and I'd like to get some details in there. So the way I add the details are with a thin fine brush in the corners between the petals. Here and there add a little bit of shadows. And then drying off that color from the brush and just blending it out into the petal. So if you have a petal like that you can add your shadow color in there and then with a clean semi-dry brush blend it out add some water if it's still too concentrated and let it fade away. I'm over exaggerating the technique simply for you to see. And then even if you want to add a little more shadow color in that little corner there, it will give your leaf more definition. And let that bleed out like uh, this example. I'll let you have a look from the other side 